Okay, you can barely see my, my lines, but they are there. And I'm going to just paint in the eyes with black. Just little coal eyes. They don't have to be perfectly round, just little irregular circles. Like little chunks of coal that are a little broken. Let's see, the next thing I want to do is, oh, he's going to have some buttons on him too. So let's, um, I'm just going to draw them in real fast. There's three buttons. I'm just using a pencil. They're probably about three-eighths of an inch in diameter. And let's fill those in with, I think we're going to do maybe a red, a blue, and I don't know, maybe a black. Just for some variation. I'm just using a little filbert to fill these in. Rather than black, I think I'm going to do the gray. Then we can shade them all with black. That way it won't jump out at you so much. It ties in with our cat. If you prefer, you can do them all one color. Always feel free to adapt things to your own taste. So we've got to do his nose. And I really hate to introduce another color into here. But I guess we're going to have to because carrots are orange. We don't really have any yellows in this picture to balance that out, but we can use some of some oranges or yellows on the birds. And get that color repeated so we can use our orange. So um just to make it easy, I'm gonna pick up some cadmium orange hue. a nice bright orange. We don't need very much of it. Use a small round brush and fill in his nose. I want to get a little shading to give some contour to his body and face, so I'm going to go back and shade around his eyes and his buttons. And we're going to use that blue and a touch of the black. We just want this gray-blue color that we used for shading the ears and the We don't really have much of a light source in this picture, so I'm just going to come along and shade sort of just around the bottom half. This is just a little float of color around the lower half of each button. We'll also do it around his eyes. If you get too much, just take the clean end of your brush and just soften that 
out a little bit. I'm also going to come here along underneath his mouth. under the nose. <clears throat> then anywhere you want to redefine the shading a little bit you can go in with this color on the snowman. So we might want to come around the where the arms go in the body, shade underneath those. Just wipe in a little bit here and there. This is also a good color to go in and shade the outside edges of that scarf. Just a little bit of blue and black mixed together. sides of his face a little more. Tuck in under that hat. Also do it on the sides of the hat band. If you start getting too dry, just pick up a little more water. When I'm side loading, I never very seldom clean the brush out. I just refresh it. Walk that color in a little bit. Also use this color to start shading the, the birdhouse Go under the, the roof line. The bottom, the bottom edge. Start shading our buttons. I'm going to create a little rim around the edge of the button, so just floating that dark shadow on this gray one around the edge. Now, when we go to the blue one, we'll need to be a little darker, so I'm going to pick up more black. that center darker. And on the red, we got that black in our brush, so I want to pick up a little bit of red to soften that out. If you mix the red and black in a float, like brush mix them together, you'll get like a, a black plum color or black cherry, and that's a good color to, to shade red with.
and go back and go over the shading underneath the buttons once more. If you repeat it, it'll smooth out a little more. When you do it the first time, sometimes it's a little grainy looking. Shade our nose a little bit with some red. So I've cleaned my brush and I'm just loading some red onto the tip like a side load. And coming down the bottom edge of that nose. Let's add some fringe to our scarf. I keep jumping around here. I'm going to use a real fine liner brush. This is a 20 aught Royal Fusion. And I think we'll do blue, blue fringe. So I'm going to take some of the blue and just pick up a little bit of white with it. I'm mixing some water into the paint. Probably off the camera a little bit. So I've picked some blue and some of the white mixed up together with some water into the paint. We want that kind of inky. And I'm just going to pull little fine fringe strokes here on the end of the scarf tails. You want these kind of flowing and free, so like they're blowing in the wind. Hopefully you can see those. Start. Paint starts getting too watery, just pick up a little more color and work that back in. Also, as your brush mixing, if the color varies a little bit, that's good because that just gives a little more dimension to the the little fringe. You have some darks and lighter blues. So if you want to finish that off a little bit, you could add some little dots of red. our buttons are dry now so we can go in and add some little highlighting to it so let's we'll use some of the orange and just a touch of white to highlight the, the red button That just to get a little bit lighter than the the background color. On the blue one, we can use um, some blue and white to lighten that up. Just come around that that little rim around the edge.
some white white with a very little touch of blue in it on that gray button just to, to highlight it. Take some black and make some little buttonholes. So we'll just let's see. We'll do four, so we can do a little X stroke of white thread in the middle. So just space out four little buttonholes in a a square. These aren't going to show up very much on that dark center. Okay, let those dry. Some little dots in our eyes to to brighten them up. I'm going to squiggle up the white down the nose to highlight. Let's go back to our hat and put some more blue on that hat. we got this blue here we mixed up for the fringe, so we'll use that. And now I'm going to go back and just float along the sides. So see, we've kind of done that wash of blue over top of the hat, the top of the hat, and it makes it look less like it's the little bald head of the, the snowman. See, we're getting there. We still have to finish up the birds, the cat, and the birdhouse. So on the birdhouse, let's fill in a hole for the bird. That's just going to be a black circle, black dot. A little black dot for a perch. Keep this little birdhouse pretty simple. We'll do some little orange beaks on the bird. Okay, I'm using just um, a liner brush, this little fine liner brush, and we'll just paint in some little triangular beaks on the birds. Let's paint a little triangle nose on the the cat. We'll just do this little little black nose. So that's an inverted triangle. And I'm going to pull just a little very fine black line down to his to define his mouth. Two little black eyes for the birds. And I'm kind of lining that. The, the, the bird's eye should be sort of in from his beak. You don't want it up on his head. It's, it's just kind of in line with his beak. Our buttons are dry enough now. Let's put some thread on those so they'll be finished up. My paints are getting kind of messy, but that's okay. Got a little bit of orange in it. We're just going to do a little X stroke for the thread and the buttonholes. I'm going to highlight these ear flaps a little more, so take some of the white paint, try to get some that's fairly clean. I'm too lazy to get some fresh out. I'm just side loading a little angle brush with that. I'm just going to come down and define that bottom edge of these ear flaps a little more so they stand out. All 
on my drawing I had some little little tassels that came down from like the bottom of these ear flaps like little ties I guess you'd call them And I'm going to take the, the little fine liner brush and wrong one. Pull some more little tassels down. make this show up a little bit more we're gonna drag some white along some of these areas where they kind of get lost take a little round brush and we're going to Dab some snow on these arms, like little piles of snow that's settled in the top edge. This also makes the arms show up more on the background. I'm just barely dabbing. You want to let it trail out so it doesn't start and stop too too abruptly. So just think if the snow was blowing and it was gathering on the tree branches, where would it settle at? So you always want to, of course, have it on the top edges. It's not usually going to stick to the bottom of a branch. Let's do a little more on the birds. I think I want to add some highlights of the orange on their wings so we can repeat that orange color. I want to lighten it up a little bit with some white. See, orange is kind of transparent, so when you put it over the red, it doesn't really show up too much. I'm just putting a little bit of white in there to make it a little more opaque. If we get it too much, we can always float a little bit of red back over it to tone it down. And things will look brighter when they're, you first put them on and they're wet, but once they dry, they tend to settle down and aren't as noticeable as they are when you first put it on.
even the orange that we put on for their beaks is once it dried it got much duller. So I'm just going over that a little bit. Let's paint some little legs in here for the birds. Notice I'm avoiding this little cat. I just haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with him. A little more shading on our birdhouse. One thing I think it needs is a little decoration. So let's put a little blue star at the top of it. We can do a little mm, maybe a little red pen stripe around the edge. Add a little bit of shading here for his eyes. So I'm just coming down from the corner of his nose up in like a little arch. waiting for kitty to dry. Let's add some little accent colors to the snowman. Am I in your... if I'm in here. Okay, I'm going to mix up like a brush mix of purple. So we're going to use a little bit of red and a little touch of yellow, or <laughs> blue, not yellow. And just going to Add some purple shadows here and there. If you get too much blue, it'll get too red. You want a little more blue violet. You want to keep these very soft. You don't want them to jump out at you too much. So be sure it's just a little bit of paint. Very transparent. Use a little bit of white and a little bit of the gray we based the cat with to, to highlight him. I'm just brush mixing that together. 
do a little bit here on his head, top of his ears. A little bit on his um, muzzle to define that a little bit more. And I'm coming down the outer edge of his legs, his front legs. front of his back leg that's showing here, and foot. You can come along the top of his tail. We're going to keep him pretty simple, I think. I'm going to add some tiger stripes to him in black. So we're going to let this, this dry and then we'll add his tiger stripes and a little bow around his neck and I think he'll be done. His feet a little bit wider. He does need some eyes. So let's um, give him some light blue eyes. Even though he's not a Siamese. Put a dot of blue. Blue in here. And when that dries, we'll put a some a black pupil in. So while that's all drying, let's go ahead and soften this background a little bit. I want to soften these some of these snowflakes. When you're doing the snowflakes, if you want to, some of them you can do in kind of the gray color that we did um, the cat in, which is sort of what happened to me because I had a dirty brush when I was working, so those some of those snowflakes got a little gray. But let's um, get kind of an old scruffy brush. This is just an old angle brush that's... I don't think we want orange. I'm going to have to break down and put out some fresh white. That's soft on your brush, and we're gonna just do some wisps back here in the background, like we have snow blowing. So, you don't want too much paint on your brush for this, you want it to be soft and Your, your lines curved so it's like little flurries blowing around. Let's 
see, we've got our cat almost finished. Let's put some little black pupils in his eyes. Round brush again, and we're going to do some watery black. Flatten that down sort of like we did the stripes on the scarf. And come back in here and pull some little stripes on the cat. So I'm pushing down and lifting so they come to a point. Oh, that one didn't, but. Rather use a little flat brush, that's okay. Let's do them on his tail, and I'm not worrying about lifting up, just striping the tail. Like a little raccoon tail. on the side of his face. We'll do some a few here on his head. And then on his front legs. So I think that looks cute. He's he kind of blends in with the rest of our painting now. We're still in the same tones. We can give him some little sparkles in his eyes with a little bit of little tiny dab of white. You don't want to overdo this. And just a little bit on his nose. And then maybe pull some few little whiskers. I'm going to add a little more snow to some of our branches. Like I said, sometimes you put colors down and they look very intense, but by the time they dry, they settle into the background. So our our snow on our branches has has gotten more of a light blue color to it now that it's dried. So I'll just put a, another layer on that. I'm going to do some outlining. I don't outline everything, but I'm going to outline just some things to give a little more definition. I'm going to come along and outline the scarf here. And I don't like to outline right on the edge. I like a, a loose outlining. don't have quite enough paint in my brush. More water than paint. So I may go on and off the edge. I don't try to stick right to it. And I Usually when I outline, I also do it in two colors. I'll do outline in black first, and then I go back and outline in white. And it softens and breaks, breaks the outlining up. So I'm, you know, mixing my paint up so it's very inky. You can see this. So we're going to outline the buttons. I'm working right up on the tip of my brush so that it stays very fine. And 
I don't worry about staying right on the edge. Let me show you. You can see these buttons. You can see like the the line I, I came way off the edge there, off the edge of the red, a little bit off of the gray. So I'm not trying to be an exact outline. I, I like this to be kind of loose and it, it just gives some, just a little definition without over making the design look just precisely outlined. Let's see, let's do the do the nose. A little like a little lid across the top of the eye 